Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to Seed Survival Gloria Victus. I made a video for this game when it first came out back in 2021, and I've always wanted to do a full playthrough of this game, but I've never quite found the time. Well, to date, we are going to rectify that and start up a new story. Now, if you'd missed that original video and you have no idea what Seed Survival is all about, imagine the game This War of Mine, but it applies to civilians trapped in a besieged castle, with Northmen running around trying to kill us. That's the premise of the game. It's very similar to This War of Mine, but obviously the theme is very different. It's pretty cool. We're going to be playing with Edring's Last Stand. This is the default classic story. They have added in another scenario since the game released, and we can come back to this later if you guys are interested, but we have to start here. There are several different starting conditions as far as a different setup of cast if you want. I'm going to go for the classic story experience with Flint and Bertram over here. This does include tutorials, which I don't need, but I want to have the classic experience, so we're going to breeze through that. And now we get this beautiful cinematic showing the Norsemen arriving on our lands. They are going to lay waste to our city and occupy it, and besiege our castle on a hill. The Bastion is our last hope for survival. That is where we must flee to in order to survive. That is where we shall make our final stand. It's the year 1205 in the Kingdom of Midlands. We were in the middle of a harvest when the Ismir struck. The warriors from Kargald have invaded our home. Here we get to make a choice, right? The guards are going to be defending somebody. Do they defend the fleeing citizens or the workers salvaging supplies? And this depends on what you want. Do you want extra starting resources or do you want to have extra people to defend the keep? And I want more people because I feel like that's going to be the harder thing for me to get later on. So they'll join the castle crew and prepare for a defense. The Ismirs are going to murder everyone in sight across the streets. Things can't get any worse until we glimpse a monstrous figure, their nameless champion. It's terrifying, and in our hearts, we abandon all hope. Supplies are limited. They will attack again soon. Somehow, we must stave off the enemy. The Bastion must hold. And here we are in the game. I have one starting character, and his name is Flint. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy over here. His name is Bertram. He's the local carpenter. He's kind of in shock right now. If we examine a little bit further, we'll notice he's clutching a small scorched doll. We realize he's just lost his entire family. We're going to try to prepare him a warm meal and help him snap out of the shock. To do that, we need to get a fireplace up and running. There is some debris that we will be able to scavenge. And this is where you can imagine this is a very similar thing to this war of mine. There are lots of piles that we will be scavenging for resources and then trying to craft some way of surviving. Here we're going to pick up some wood and some fibers. Okay, let's get over here to the storehouse where I will be able to craft myself a stump with a sawhorse. Okay, can skip through all that, please. Thank you. Let's go ahead and place that over here. Now, first, I want to point out, you see these yellow and blue lines. And you might be wondering what the heck is going on here. The Ismirs are going to attack again. And when they do, they will be using projectile weaponry like catapults or fire arrows. Anyone standing in the yellow area, anything built in the yellow area, is going to be at risk of being killed or taking damage. So we don't want to build here unless we have to. It's only in the direct shadow of the keep in this blue area that we know we are going to be safe. So I'm going to be fitting as much in here as I can, just to make sure that we don't lose anything when we get attacked. With this built up, we are going to be able to craft ourselves some firewood using some of the wood that I've already scavenged. We could also build some planks, which I will need at some point, but for right now, some simple wood is going to be good enough. Now the game is going to tell me to go and scavenge over here and try to find some raw food. And we do. We've got a whopping two eggs and some rotten food, some materials, and more fibers. Can't eat the rotten food, but we can feed that to animals a bit later on. We're going to use those materials and craft ourselves a quick fireplace so I can craft myself some meals. We've used up one egg and some of the firewood that I already scavenged. That's going to get me a basic meal. Let's go ahead and feed that to Bertram. Feed him here. He puts down the bowl and he falls asleep. We're going to give him a chance to rest. Now the game is warning me that we are going to run out of materials and supplies here very, very quickly. If we don't find a way to get down to the city below using some secret passageways, we're doomed. We have to go out during the night when the enemy is less likely to detect us. Now who's coming out of the Gastian? It's this guy over here. His name is Galvik, and he is a garrison member known by the locals. He's going to tell me that if we don't find ways of supplying the defenders pretty soon, we are going to be overrun and killed. 
So what do we need? We need to go to the Bowyer's Workshop and we need to find ourselves some arrows. That is the only way we are going to survive. So nighttime comes and with our one character, Flint, we are going to go scavenge the city. This is the city map, and there are several different districts that are all connected to each other. The only way we can get in here right now is by using this one selected passage. Eventually we can unlock some others, but for now this is going to be good enough. Let's bring along a quick torch, I know that I'm going to need that, and start scavenging. Now for this first night in the marketplace, I know that there are not going to be any enemies patrolling, I'm not at any risk, so I'm going to run around as fast as I can and try to scavenge every resource pile. I always like to leave one pile by the exit. Uh, that is a strategy I learned from this war of mine a long time ago, and basically it means you can gather up everything you can during the night, and when you're about ready to run before the daybreak comes, you can go ahead to your main drop-off pile, pick and choose what you think you're going to need, and you know you have a good stock of resources. You're not just kind of frantically finding whatever you can pick up, right? So that's what we're going to do. Now over here there are some vegetables. We could pick those, but I'm not going to. Why? Because as long as they're in the ground, they stay fresh. The moment I pick them, they start to rot. And I don't have the ability to eat them right now, so why bother? Now, one thing I do want to draw attention to is the rubble pile right over here. If we had a shovel, we could clear this out. And what would happen is we'd have access to a whole other segment of the map. That's going to be very important for us later on. For right now, we don't have a shovel, so I'm just going to have to ignore it. I do see a gate over here that I would like to use. However, I need a key for that. Don't have that right now. That's telling me there are other ways that I can open up different segments of the city. I think our inventory is about full, so let's go ahead and drop some of that stuff off like I was talking about. Now, as we're running around, you'll notice this white halo, and that's because I'm running very fast, so I'm making a lot of noise. That's a problem if there are enemy guards patrolling around, which at the moment, there are not, so I feel fine running around as fast as I can. But later on, that's going to be important because stealth is a critical aspect of this game. This right here, by the way, is the Bowyer's Workshop. Let's go ahead and pop in over here. We're going to find that the Bowyer has been hung from a tree with arrows sticking out of his body. Let's go ahead and step inside to find out what we can. There's a flash in the dark. Is it arrows? Yes, it is. However, a dislodged beam collapses on us, and we take a small injury. Hopping outside, there is a woman leaning over the body who has pulled him down from the tree. She is trying to bury him. So we could help her bury the corpse, and what we do is get, I think, some valuables out of the arrangement. Good for trading later. Or we could kind of be a monster and just take the axe and leave the body. And unfortunately, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rob the dead, which makes her sad and makes my people depressed. But it's kind of important because having a weapon early on is a really, really big deal. I want that. So let's take these bundles of arrows and continue scavenging until daybreak. Now over here, you see a noxious cloud, which is a corpse. If you run through it, there's a chance we contract a disease. Which obviously is a big deal, because uh, we have no way of healing that right now. I'm going to use my torch and burn the corpse, just for safety, to make sure we can get up here and gather up these two extra resources without any extra risk. At some point, though, if you want to, I mean, you could just risk getting diseased. I don't know, it's kind of up to you. If you didn't bring a torch, that would kind of be your only option. Anyway, scavenging up over here, we find some damaged light armor. That could be very helpful for us if we can repair it. And also a whole carcass of an animal. That's going to be great when we want to butcher that thing up to get some extra food. Daybreak is almost upon us. Let's go to our primary drop-off and let's figure out what we want to take with us. So I don't care about the valuables. I do want to take along the bundle of arrows. I could leave the axe and save this for the next time we come by. And we'll just pick it up when we need it. Uh, I can leave behind all of this. All right, so what do we want to take? Let's go ahead and take a lot of wood. Let's take all of the materials, which may be a little aggressive, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take along some cloth as well, so I can make myself a bed. I think this is going to have to be good enough for the moment, but we obviously will be coming back a bit later. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave behind the materials. I just... Mm. I'm going to take the wood instead. We don't have to take uh, the materials. I could get some upgrades later, but for now, I think this is fine. Let's just go for full stacks. That way, I'm not risking finding more materials and having to use up an inventory slot later. All right, so before dawn starts to fa uh, fall upon us, we get back to the keep. The night was calm. Enemy assault could come any day. We need to use this opportunity to help the soldiers at the Bastion. First things first, though. Let's go to Bertram and see how he's doing. Has he snapped out of it? Yes, he has, and now he is ready to rejoin the fight. He's recommending that we take a look at our animals and also find some fresh water. There was a well up here, but it got struck by a trebuchet. So let's try clearing through this area over here and see if we can get to this well. 
Maybe we get lucky and we have a source of water. But I'm not feeling very hopeful, to be honest. I'm also going to give Flint our only bandage so that he can get himself healed up. Then we're going to run over here to the keep and we're going to build up a bed. He's going to have an opportunity to sleep during the day. Yep, all right. The well was crushed by the projectile. There's no way we can clear it out before dying of thirst. We're going to have to find potable water in the city. That is unfortunate. So unfortunately, I don't have enough fibers to build a bed. Ooh, maybe I should have taken some fibers last time. Let's keep scavenging, see if we can find a few more. I'll bet we can find at least one. Some medicine. Okay, that's not so bad. Let's clear out the piles next to the animals. Come on, find some fibers. That's one. That'll work. All right. Flint, go over here, build a bed, and then once you got a bed, go ahead and rest. Just like with this war of mine, people need a few hours of sleep. If they work all day and scavenge during the night, they're not going to be in very good shape, are they? There are going to be some animals. We have hens and pigs. We can feed them at a later date. Right now, I don't see that as too important for us. Flint, go ahead and sleep. There we go. And let's get ourselves a workshop. I know I'm going to need that workbench. Again, we want to place it over here in the blue as much as we can. Here we go. We don't need this this exact second, but eventually we will. Now, let's take a look at the Bastion, and here you can see something important. So, we currently have a combat strength of 32. The enemy has a strength of 35. There are 13 defenders. Five of them have axes. Two have bows, but no arrows. If we give them some arrows, that combat strength increases. As long as we are above their number, we have a good strong chance at winning a fight. So let's go ahead and give them the arrows. We'll deliver them here. Later, we'll have to give them more weapons, repair their armor, and also send them food and water. Otherwise, our people are going to starve and die. That's all we have to do here during the day. So I'm going to have Bertram just work here for the rest of the day. This is a big scavenge pile. Sometimes you find random stuff over here. If you've got nothing better to do, then I guess you might as well go ahead and start scavenging. For now, though, let's go ahead and skip time until dusk. That should move things forward. At least I assume it does. Nighttime has come. Flint should be well rested, so he's good to go. Let's have him scavenge and have Bertram go ahead and sleep in the bed. Okay. We're going to go back to the exact same location as before, but now we have to find that potable water. That's the next stage of the tutorial, so there's more stuff that we need to carry. I think some new points should have opened up that we will be able to explore. I don't remember that corpse being there before. Maybe it was. Yep, new things that we can explore. Water barrels. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Open this stuff up. Seven potable water. Perfect. That's the drinking water we're looking for. You can also find dirty water in the game, which obviously we cannot drink without making ourselves horribly sick, or we could feed it to some vegetables that we grow later on. Or we could boil it and make it safe. I don't have a good fireplace for that yet. There's the clean and dirty water, for example, right there. But eventually it's going to be good. What is this? What is in this resource pile? It's a shovel! What do you know? We can use that to open something up. What do we want to open up, though? Great question. Uh, let's take a look at the map. Do we want to go down to the south in this area? Or do we want to go up to the north in this area around the golden corner? Hmm... Well, what I did before was explore down here, and I stand by this. I still think this is the best area to open up, so that's what we're going to do. So you can see here I'm now demolishing this. It's going to take a little time, and we are going to be making some noise in the process, but that's fine. There's no enemies nearby yet, but there will be soon. Okay, so this is where the game is warning me that there are enemy patrols. We can see their field of vision. We want to stay away from that as much as we can. We also are going to be making noise. You can see if we are in range of hear uh, them hearing us. If we can see these three symbols right here, we do not want to run or scavenge. We've got to be very careful. Then we have only seconds to get the heck out of here before they attack us. And they are much stronger than we are. Stealth is our friend. Yeah, we're entering into Cheapside. This is the new area. Okay. Uh, do I see an enemy nearby yet? Not quite. Wait. No, we're still good. Let's just keep looking around. Gather up some resources over here. Hold on, we passed by a ruined house. You hear a uh, yelling inside and a screaming woman. Could it be them? Let's take a look inside. Two Ismirs are standing by a half-fallen wall. The third enemy approaches a terrified woman and forcibly pushes her to the ground. She draws a knife and rips apart his guts. We could attack, and if we were a stronger character like Bertram, I think this would be a viable option. But instead, I'm going to push the wall on them, like so. And it does work. It buries the enemies alive. When the dust settles, we see her wide open eyes staring in awe. Do we want to take her back to the castle? Yes. A third character could be very useful. It means I can get a lot more done during the day. All right. Rena, welcome aboard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I see an enemy coming by. We are going to try to get behind a wall over here. 
and just hide. Hopefully this works and he doesn't look in here. I don't think he does. Yeah, so he should be good. We can see he would hear us right now, so we do not want to be scavenging. Just got to wait for a minute while he passes. We could stealth attack him, but it's going to be difficult to pull that off without a weapon. Not impossible, just risky. It means a lot of enemies start coming to you. Hey, another shovel. That's amazing. Let's go ahead and continue scavenging, find whatever else we can, and then get ready to hightail it back home. Or I guess we could just use the shovel right now. Um, hold on, this opens up a new area, right? Yes, it does. Let's go ahead and clear out this obstacle and just use up the item while I can. We're gonna go ahead and speed it along, making a lot of extra noise, but right now I don't know if any enemy is nearby, so this should be safe. There we go, we've opened up another area. There are places to hide. You may have seen that symbol down over here by some bushes. That is a place where we will be able to hide ourselves in the shadows. It's a good way to just avoid being detected if it's kind of getting risky. Which does happen on occasion, but uh, right now at least we're looking fine. And unfortunately I don't have a lot more time to work with. We could run back out there, but I don't think that's going to be a good idea. So I think this is good enough, honestly. We have a, few extra, a couple extra hours, but I don't think I'm going to get much more. Let's just go ahead and return to the castle and see what we want to take with us. So water, yes, definitely. Some materials, sure. Valuables I can leave. Wood, sure. Dirty water I can leave. Let's take a plank. Let's take the damaged armor. Let's take the medicine. I could take along an axe, and that would give us a slight edge when we're fighting the enemy as well, but I need that axe myself because I do plan on stealth attacking a lot of enemies sometime soon, maybe next night. So let's go back to the castle. Yes, I do want to return. Thank you very much. And the enemy assault approaches. We must get ready for the worst. They are going to be attacking us very soon. Okay, so first off, um, Flint, you need to go and rest. Rena, go get the eggs. Uh, Bertram, head over here. And you got some more eggs, that's great. Um, is there anything we can give to the Bastion? No, we've got nothing to give them at the moment. Still on our side as far as strength, but like, eh. Let's, um, let's go ahead and... Ooh, I can't quite upgrade the storehouse, but I'm close. I'm gonna try to get myself some planks and see if we could upgrade that storehouse. I need to get a four more planks. Let's go ahead and do that. Flint is recovering and feeling better. That's good. We got a new character. All right. Uh, Rena, you know what? I've got nothing better to do with you right now, so let's just go ahead and start rummaging. But very soon we are going to be attacked. Yep, here we go. We are now under siege. They are firing their siege engines. We'll have a chance to see when the rocks are falling and make sure we get our people out of the way. Uh, should be red circles right there, for example. Okay, so right now I'm fine. Should be fine over here as well. A little scary, but we're okay. Uh, Bertram, why don't you head over here and start crafting an upgrade for our storehouse. Rena, let's go ahead and quickly start scavenging some of these rocks. Uh, Flint, I think you're safe over here. I really hope you're safe over here. That was a little scary. Nice physics. But we can gather up some rubble here, and we can send that to the defenders to try and shore up the walls before they attack. You can see that these uh, lines right here are getting close to each other, and that is when we are going to see them clash. So let's go to the Bastion, and let's say that I want to send, yep, some of the rocks up over here. That gets me some fortifications, so we're better at surviving when they do attack. Get over here, Arena. Drop it off quickly. There we go. All right, that's a little extra strength, just barely in time. We'll continue with the rummaging. And we'll see how the clash goes in just a little bit. And there we go. Now at some point, you may notice here, we'll be able to build our own trebuchet to try and do some damage. But for now, that's as good as it's gonna get. Hey Bertram, go over here, let's take a look at the Bastion. All right, so we used up all of our arrows. We still have 13 people. It looks like they're not wounded yet, though they probably will register as wounded later. Uh, weapons are still fine, and we've got our 16 fortification. Overall, it looks like that went pretty well for us, and the enemy took some serious casualties. Excellent. It was a tough battle, no one fallen, no one wounded. Yep, this is about as good as you could have hoped for, and we did use up all of our arrows. That does mean we're going to be a lot weaker the next time that they attack, which is obviously a little scary. But what can you do? They may be wondering why I upgraded the storehouse, mainly because it's going to give me access to a lot of other really helpful recipes, including, by the way, rat traps, ways of getting some extra food. I'm okay without that at the moment, but this is going to be important. Also, rainwater collectors, a way of getting some additional water. Furnaces, so we can smelt down some iron bars, and an armory where we can equip all of our weapons and armor. All of this 
is going to be oh so important. Unfortunately, I've used up all my materials. So I can't do a whole lot right now, except maybe go ahead and get a rat trap. And honestly, just having extra food is not the worst thing I've ever done. But yeah, the getting the storehouse level two is kind of important. Upgrading other stuff is going to be great too, like the sawhorse here. But it's going to take iron bars. We don't have iron bars, therefore I can't upgrade it. If we did though, we would be able to start crafting way more efficiently. One wood becomes like five firewood or something along those lines. Obviously very good stuff. I do think we're going to be able to get a pretty good amount of food later since we have one animal carcass already. I'm going to go ahead and get myself my rainwater collector a little bit on the early side. Now, unfortunately, it's kind of huge. This one's not going to fit in the blue area very easily. I mean, I guess we could place it over here. Uh, it's a bit risky, though. I, I think I'm going to just accept that and maybe place it over here for now. And we'll start gathering up some rainwater. Being able to get a lot of water early, not a bad plan. And then, yeah, we can go ahead and skip time until dusk. They'll finish up whatever jobs they're currently working on. And we can decide if we want to go scavenging once again. And the answer is probably yeah. Uh, Rena is lightly wounded. Is anyone here good at fighting? No, Flint is dying of thirst. That's a problem. I didn't realize that. I think we'll have Bertram scavenge. And we'll have Flint sleep on the ground and Rena sleep in the bed since she's wounded. You already had some good sleeps. Bertram's not exactly great, but he can fight. So we could use him to start going on a rampage. And honestly, this is going to be a really risky choice on my end. But we are taking the axe. I'm now armed. All right. Let's go find the enemy. Uh, let's swap to the axe. There we go. So now we are wielding this. And let's see what else we can discover. But if I have an opportunity to stealth attack and kill some guards and take their stuff, I will happily do it. An iron bar. Ooh, okay. We can use that for sure to upgrade our sawhorse at some point. I want that. Um, but I need a lot more materials as well. Dirty water. Not exciting, but I'll, I'll take it for now. We can drop it off elsewhere later. I know there's an enemy up over here. We can't get past those corpses. Not safely. There's an enemy patrolling. And I don't know that I want to risk getting up here and then finding that we are going to be snuck up on from behind. There he is. All right, this is, this is a little risky. I'm going to try hiding here. We can try to sneak attack him, but it's almost certainly going to bring some friends. That does worry me, but if we're very careful, maybe we'll be okay. Let's give this a quick second. Wait till he gets close. Now we're going to sneak up behind him. Come on, sneaky sneak, sneaky sneak, sneaky sneak, sneaky sneak, sneaky sneak. Get him. Get him. Got him. All right. And the other guy is an idiot and did not even notice. Now, here's the problem. By killing someone, eventually they are going to find this body. And this raises the alarm everywhere. So a lot of areas are going to be swarming with enemies later on. It might be a good idea. We cleared this area out. Let's see if we can find the other um, access path going this way. Because uh, I know this place is going to be crawling with extra enemies tomorrow night. And that means that we are going to have a hard time actually exploring and getting materials. I'd rather move over... Grab another zone so that while this place is swarming, we can explore here tomorrow night. This just gives me more options. And I think that's worth something. Another guy patrolling. Could try to attack him. Little risky, though. Not looking to do that right now. Just got to be careful not to make too much noise. We'll continue exploring. I need to find a place to drop off resources. But what I really care about is finding that exit, which is dead ahead. So if we keep moving this way... We'll be okay. Just slowly standing behind the guy, not drawing any attention at all. You know nothing about me. Sees absolutely nothing. What an idiot. All right, let's go over here and we'll interact with this. We find the blocked entrance, a shortcut. Let's go ahead and clear out the entrance. There we go. We cleared it out and now we have another way of getting out of here. Excellent. Let's drop off our extra stuff and resume the scavenging at least for a couple more hours. All right, that's kind of all the time we got. We did find some fresh fodder that I can give to our animals, which is not a terrible plan. Um, let's see. I do want to leave the axe. I could bring the broken axe, but there's not much point. The rest of this is kind of just okay. Um, I guess I just bring all of this. It's not, it's not outstanding, and honestly, Bertram can't carry as much stuff, but all right, this is fine. Let's get back to the castle just in the nick of time. Excellent. All right. And that is where we're going to be ending today's video. But it looks like the last fight was intense. Uh, their weapons need repair and they desperately need bandages. And that's not the worst of it. There are soldiers from the Sangmar Empire to the south. Are they going to help us or attack us? We don't know. 
Oh boy, what a load of fun. We killed an enemy, they're not gonna forget that. For the next few days, their patrols will be sweeping the city. It may be a good idea to lay low. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, that's where I'm gonna end this video. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.